Hey everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Red Hat Summit 23rd here in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm John Furrier, your host, here with Paul Gillen, breaking down all the action. Paul, great to see you. Good to see you, John. Yeah, it's been, been a while. Thanks for uh, partnering up with theCUBE this week. Appreciate Always it. Always love attending Red Hat Summit. It's really a special place. We get the, the relationship that Red Hat has with its customers is yeah. unique, I think. And just open source being so successful and Red Hat riding that wave has been such a great run. And, There'll never be another Red Hat. We've got two great guests here. Red Hat, we got Helen Kim, Red Hat's VP Partner Ecosystem, Commercial Marketing. Welcome, welcome to the Thank Cube. Thank you so much, John. And we got Tom Hepfield, Vice President, General Manager, Worldwide Ecosystem Sales, HPE. Yep. Welcome to the Cube. Thank you. So I have to, I'll start with you, Tom. H HPE's Green Leg has been a big success. <coughs> I remember when that was kind of introduced. Like, oh, what's this? Oh, what's this going to be like? <laughs> Congratulations on Thank the success. Talk about what's going on now with Red Hat, what's the relationship, what, what are you doing here? Well, so actually we've had a great deal of success to your point with, uh, with Red Hat. And it goes back quite some time where we um, actually together developed solutions in the open source community um, and, and basically providing customers with meeting their needs around open source technology in an OEM fashion. Now we've taken it to a whole nother level by delivering this in the, in the form of an as a service solution. Helen, how about you? What's it been like working with HPE? The Green Lake service has been successful, customers adopt it. The past year has been amazing, to be honest. And um, you know, as, as Tom has alluded, we have decades of um, innovation and partnership happening to support us here. Um, number one, um, one of the reasons why we see this as a really important relationship for us is because HPE and Red Hat, we've been on the same hybrid, multi-cloud journey together as partners and industry leaders. Not only that, um, you know, HPE is our largest OEM partner, which, you know, of course, that means that we've got thousands of joint customers together using our solutions. And we've been invested heavily um, in bringing our products into GreenLake, making those available in these new delivery formats so that our customers can have choice and optionality as they move to their future states. So what form does uh, Red Hat for GreenLake take? Or is, is this embedded in uh, a bundle with, with GreenLake infrastructure? Is it a separate, is it a marketplace relationship? What is it like? So, so actually there are two elements. One is we have a very substantial OEM business and we're going to continue doing that, right? A lot of success, we continue doing that. Well at the same time what we've done is we've actually pivoted to taking a look at how we can bring the two infrastructures and two technologies together to be complementary in the marketplace. An example being that, first of all, Red Hat was our first ISV going into GreenLake, so they are number one. And we, in fact, when we created GreenLake, they were we were the only company that approached uh, the Red Hat to, to participate in that in that regard. But in terms of where we're taking it to the next level, what we've done is we've actually developed solutions where, whereby we've actually enabled all of the Red Hat products to, to actually how be housed on our GreenLake platform. And so as a result of that, we're now able to provide an as-a-service solution for the entire suite of Red Hat products as we do with our own IT infrastructure in the form of an as-a-service offering. It's been quite a pickup too. I noticed the storage was one of the first ones to jump in there. Uh, obviously, OpenShift has been a big part of that, Ellen, on your end. And it's interesting, Matt Hicks was just on theCUBE, he was on stage watching his keynote. He mentioned, oh, we've been doing hybrid cloud for 10 years, a decade. I'm like, <laughs> not real. I'm like, no, we I'm like, well, shit, actually, yeah, a decade. Oh <laughs> you God. just yeah. said the oh, S word. Oh my God, Sorry. it's a Q, it's digital TV. <laughs> okay, yeah. good. And, and I'm like, it has been 10 years. Yeah. And you guys as well have been talking hybrid. I remember uh, I was at HPE, um, HP Discover back then, but HPE Discover in 2012, they were doing microservices, talking about containers mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. hybrid. So mm -hmm. this hybrid, it seems to be the key point is that the, the cloud ops? Let's talk about the role of hybrid and what it relates to you, your partnerships, uh, your partnership. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I mean, hybrid is critical for, for Red Hat, and it's a critical foundation point by which we are talking about all of our solutions, including the new AI platforms that we introduced today. So, in our partnership with, with HPE, right, um, one of the things that, like, the beauty of bringing it all together is that with the addition of H, uh, Red Hat products on HP GreenLake, we are na now able to fully realize our open hybrid cloud strategy, right? So from an OpenShift viewpoint, you know, customers can um, virtually deploy their containers, um, their virtualized uh, workloads, and in a unified Kubernetes approach, if they want to have this on-prem as a services offering as the way that they will consume this, it is a true consumption model that they can take advantage of and that is only available through HP GreenLake and that's the advantage that we see. Um, 
you know, lastly, what we also see with HP GreenLake and, and the benefits on this hybrid experience, and I think we heard it today with our friend from Barclays who said they are looking at on-prem as a service in terms of their next steps for efficiency and effectiveness, right? So the beauty of, of the Red Hat um, GreenLake relationship is that um, you know, GreenLake really helps us to simplify the customer experience, right? By combining the acquisition of Red Hat products and, and solutions together with the pay-as-you-go model and of course with world-class support surrounding it, um, we just believe the value proposition is, is as strong as ever. Tom, I have to ask you this. When IBM mm -hmm. acquired Red Hat, some people were uh, cast doubts on whether the existing OEM relationships, the partnerships that Red Hat had would, would be compromised. Have you seen any impact from your partner, your partner Red Hat being owned by a competitor? No, we have not. As a matter of fact, um, we continue to develop technologies even together that are very complementary. So an example being that if you think about, and then we talked a lot about what we're doing on the GreenLake front, and certainly the GreenLake has actually enabled us to work with a lot of different partners. As a matter of fact, we kind of look at GreenLake as the fourth cloud, if you will, whereby we even work with some of the other hyperscalers, if you will. And so we actually have connect points and make sure that there's ready access and we're able to do this as a service working with these other hyperscaler partners. So we see that as more of a cooperation at times, but to be candid with you, we see a lot of complementary capabilities and offerings with, between Red Hat and us. If you think about, like for example, <coughs> the Red Hat Ansible product, and actually providing automation and it's doing it at the application layer. HP, we have a technology as well, which is HP One View. It's not it's not a competitive product, it's actually a complementary in that we're actually providing automation at the infrastructure layer. So when you think about that, we're providing automation together across the entire data center. So we, we see a lot of complementary capabilities and rarely do we find ourselves in a competitive situation. Yeah, the cloud really makes that uh, partnership work better, it's API first. Right. Um, love that cloud aspect. OpenShift too has been also successful with Kubernetes and containers. Where's the customer journey in you guys? How do you feel about where you, the customers are at right now in terms of where they are on the, on the digital now business transformation? Because with AI, the push has been like, okay, yeah. I got cloud scale in public cloud. I got cloud operations on premises. Edge is right around the corner. You guys are one seeing that. Mm -hmm. It's distributed computing. This is what we're right. talking about. Correct. And been there, done that. You got HPE mm -hmm. and, 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 and uh, Red Hat. What's the customer, where are they in the journey? Is, is it, are they a third day the where? I mean, are they still on VMs? Is it both, the containers? I've seen different stats, I don't know which one's the most accurate, but still a lot more room for migrating over to container and Kubernetes. What's the progress bar look like for customers? Well, I'll tell you, from my perspective, it's a tremendous headroom left for us. As I said before, we're going to continue to do our OEM business, which is, is highly profitable, but to your point, the, the, the op real opportunity is really what we can do in the form of an as-a-service kind of model. To give you an idea of the level of scale what we see from a market perspective is that there's tremendous growth and acceptance and adoption in the marketplace between our joint offerings. As a matter of fact, at, at this point, we're slightly north of $10 billion total contract value from an HP GreenLake perspective. By the way, that consists of about 65,000 customers. Um, to, to put it in perspective even larger than that, we have over 900 partners who actually are representing that platform, not only selling it, but even delivering some of that content. Um, yeah. When we think about the scale that we have, and from a data perspective, we're actually providing more than a, one exabyte of data that we're managing within <laughs> that environment, that platform. Yeah. And so when we think about who's participating from a customer perspective, and many of us actually are in the very same large accounts, 80% mm -hmm. of HP's largest customers are using GreenLake. So it just gives you an idea of the amount of scale, capability, and capacity that's still. And you guys have had customers together for like, it's not like it's new, but for Correct. decades. Right. Absolutely. Since Red Hat's been around, I've seen it, they've been with, on HP gear. Thousands. Hard with thousands. Tens of thousands. Tens of thousands. Yeah. Right. Where does HP currently stand on the, uh, toward the goal of making the entire portfolio, hardware and software available on GreenLake? Well, actually, you know, one of the things that Antonio Nero, our CEO, stated in 2019 is that he was going to make every product that we have inside HP GreenLake enabled, and we've met that objective. As a matter of fact, this year was the third year and we actually met that objective. He actually announced it at uh, Discover last year and, um, and certainly has shared that with the analysts. So we're well on our way in, in that regard. So the products and the portfolio we have in HPE, it's all HP uh, GreenLake enabled. And, and how has that uh, affected your sales mix? I mean, how much are customers buying, actually buying, paying up front for on-premise on infrastructure uh, right now? Well, as, as I mentioned, you know, you, you think about 80% of our customers, our largest customers are subscribing 
to HP GreenLake, so the adoption is very, very high. There's still a tremendous opportunity for us to continue to grow that business, but the, op op the uh, opportunity is scaling. As I said before, it's about $10 billion that we see from a total contract value right now. Um, that number's continuing to, to grow. We're getting a, a great adoption with our partners, particularly the system integrators and the reseller community, and that helps us actually grow at scale. So it's, it's on a tremendous trajectory right now. And we've been meeting all of the financial objectives and targets that we have, particularly around the new logo mm -hmm. kind of attainment. So even the existing HP footprint, we have customers who are now moving from traditional CapEx procurement over to the Green Lake and the offerings that we have. Obviously you guys talked about your joint customers and history. Where's the growth going to come from? Where's the key sectors? What industries do you see? What use cases are emerging? Obviously AI is one we're hearing here. It's obviously hyped up, but still it's going to be impactful. Key growth strategy for the partnership. What areas, what use cases do you well, see? I'm sorry, from, 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 a, from a customer segmentation perspective, we're seeing it across all segments. We really are. Um, we have a number of examples where we can kind of cite some. Uh, I'll give you an example on the um, financial services side. There's a very large bank in Japan, it's JCB Financial. Um, they have about 140 million cardholders. Um, with that, about 37 different uh, organizations with whom they do business with, right? Um, they were looking to move their um, solution to kind of grab additional customers and what they were looking to do is actually create new applications that will be easy, easy and readily deployed showing flexibility in the way in which they can ramp these up very very fast they wanted to do this in a hybrid cloud, cloud environment and as a result of that what they did is they actually went off with HP GreenLake and they actually went with the Red Hat <coughs> as well and, and so when you look at the, the joint solution that we actually provided and um, you know the open shift is actually providing that capability around giving them great access to a lot of different platforms and, and here we are on the green lake side really enabling that through a consumption services model to help them meet both objectives so in the financial services industry it's really taken off the other reason being is because when you think about some industries be it financial services public sector and there are a few others there's really a propensity of wanting to do this on-prem. They want to be able to maintain and manage control of their data. So those are a couple of industries that we see a lot of traction, but it's across the board. We see them, as I said, public sector, health and human services. Um, it's just it's really manufacturing, just totally across the board. Do you agree? Absolutely. I mean, similar to the transition to cloud and public cloud, the use cases are very broad across industry. Of course, we've got some great joint customers that are like first movers, which is awesome, in financial services, public sector. Um, however, we see that interest growing across all of our base. How do you see hybrid cloud evolving at this point? We're a few years into this phenomenon and a lot of products, a lot of, a lot of companies are, uh, have emerged to help customers get to the hybrid cloud. Where is that, uh, where are the technology trends there? From a, from a trend perspective, I mean, look, we work with partners like HPE, we work with our entire ecosystem now of partners more, I think more uh, collaboratively than ever to really bring the full solution um, and the options that are made available to them. So whether it's on-prem, private, public, hybrid, um, there are so many ways that we are working across our ecosystem of partners to really fully realize our solutions together. And I think it's this value of the ecosystem message and value of the ecosystem engagement that we see as being um, an extremely important part of our go-to-market strategy as we move forward, but simply because customers want solutions to help solve problems. They don't necessarily want the point product per se. So we're working very hard to build those hybrid solutions with all of our partners like HPE. And, and, and if I could just add to that, you know, based on what Helen says, I couldn't agree more. What we're really finding is incredible adoption with our partner community, and it really is a true ecosystem play. So to give you an example, when we work with, an another example, was working with an auto manufacturer, in fact, a couple of the large auto manufacturers, they were looking to develop a solution. Mm -hmm. and, and when you think about what they're doing in the autonomous drive arena, it's a propensity of wanting to collect mm -hmm. incredible volume of data from a lot of different data sources. And what they're trying to do is really collect this data and create these really complex algorithms and having to be able to solve for these things very quickly, otherwise the cars will start to wreck into each other and have some, some real challenges. What we've done is working with not only partners such as Red Hat, but we also work with a few other partners, ISVs, we're, we're actually creating this ecosystem solution, we're providing a total end-to-end -to -end solution, all as a service, providing that single solution to a customer, but it's really the power of bringing in the entire ecosystem together where we create Absolutely. even greater differentiation in the marketplace. So.
Helen, Tom, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Helen, I'll give you the final word. Cloud and partnering, and as the ecosystems are changing so fast, um, better together seems to be a theme with partnering because there's so many new opportunities It's to more than a theme, it is a reality for us here. And more than ever, you know, working together with partners like HPE and our entire ecosystem is fully in focus for everyone here at Red Hat. Awesome, thanks for coming on theCUBE, appreciate you. it. I'm Jeff with Paul Gillen here. Day one of two days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage here in Boston, Massachusetts. CUBE coverage, go to siliconangle.com. Stories will be flowing there as well. And we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.